In today's lecture, we will discuss tray efficiency. So we have discussed previously uh, how to find the number of trays, ideal trays, in case of a tray column. We made an assumption that the liquid and gas phases are in equilibrium in each tray. So here, if you remember, yn plus 1 represents the composition of the or concentration of the solute entering the nth tray. yn represents the composition of the solute in the gas phase leaving the nth tray. The vial quantity yn is in equilibrium with the liquid phase, that is our assumption. And the from each tray, the gas leaves after attaining equilibrium. But if you consider a real scenario, that will not be the case. That means the concentration in each tray will not be equal to the equilibrium concentration. That is because of the less efficiency. So always the composition will be greater than the equilibrium concentration. As a result, we will require more number of plates than the actual pl actual plates required. So we defined efficiency E0, overall efficiency equal to ratio of number of theoretical plates required to number of actual plates required. So if efficiency equal to 1 means number of theoretical plates is equal to number of actual plates. So overall efficiency is equal to ratio of number of theoretical plates required by number of actual plates. There are different ways by which we can define efficiency. We just now defined overall efficiency. Another term is known as Murphy plate efficiency. This is defined for each component and each plate. So here we are going to define an efficiency term for each of the plates. If you remember the diagram for a tray column earlier, you can see that the number of plates is n and each tray plate or trays are arranged one above the other. Now Murphy plate efficiency is used to determine the efficiency for each of these trays. And in each tray, there is a gas phase and a liquid phase. So we define tray efficiency for each component that is solute present in gas phase and solute present in liquid phase separately. So ratio of actual change in gas phase concentration to change which would have resulted if the gas phase reached equilibrium with the liquid is known as Murphy plate efficiency. Let's try to visualize a tray. You can see a tray column and let's say this is the end tray. Yn plus 1 is the concentration or composition of the gas phase in solute in the gas phase entering the tray and Yn is the composition which the, with, with, with which the gas phase leaves the end tray. And let's, uh, let's assume that Yn star was the equilibrium composition that should have achieved in the tree. Then Murphy plate efficiency with respect to gas phase is equal to Yn plus 1 minus Yn by Yn plus, minus, Yn plus 1 minus Yn star. Here if Yn and Yn star are equal that means if equilibrium is reached in each of this stage efficiency will be equal to 1. So here Yn plus 1 and Yn1 represent the measured compositions entering and leaving the trace respectively. So we can write Murphy tray efficiency with respect to liquid phase also. You can see here Xn is the composition of the liquid phase leaving the end tray and Xn minus 1 is the composition of the uh, solute in the liquid phase entering the end tray. So the different ratio of difference in Xn minus 1, Xn minus Xn minus 1 to Xn star minus Xn minus 1 is known as Murphy tray efficiency of the liquid phase. Here Xn star is the 
equilibrium composition of the solute in the liquid phase and like i said if xn and xn star are equal then efficiency will be equal to 1 so please do not confuse here xn is the actual measured composition of the liquid leaving the end tray and xn star is the equilibrium composition in real cases it will always the xn will be less uh, less than xn star for the case in which the solute is getting transferred from gas phase to the liquid phase there is another method to represent efficiency this is known as murphy's point efficiency this is also based on an assumption see if you consider a tray you can see that the liquid is falling from the tray above and it is flowing in this horizontal direction and it is moving to the next tray so if it should be uh, we have to consider the mixing pattern in each of the tray the liquid is flowing in the uh, from left to right in this particular case so we cannot assume that there is proper mixing and concentration of the solute is uniform everywhere in the tray we can see obviously the chances are as the as the liquid moves in this direction the concentration will of the solute in the liquid will increase because more and more contact time will be uh, will be present so i can say that the concentration varies along the horizontal direction concentration of solute in the liquid varies along the horizontal direction just like you consider a plug flow reactor and here i am going to assume that if you if i draw a vertical line if i take the cross section the concentration is always uniform so here i am going to represent or i am going to find efficiency based on this concept let us consider this tray and a point which is drawn by a horizontal line here and i am going to consider the concentration in the of the cross section drawn by this line here the concentration of the gas solute in the gas phase entering at this particular point is y n plus y p n plus 1 similarly the concentration of the solute in the gas phase leaving the this tray after this after this particular point is ypn and let's assume the equilibrium composition at this particular point is 5 star pn then murphy point efficiency is defined as ypn plus 1 minus ypn by ypn plus 1 minus y star pn here remember we have assumed that the concentration of the liquid phase varying along the horizontal direction and we assume anywhere in the vertical direction the concentration is uniform for example everywhere if, if i take a concentration at some point after this line somewhere here it will be ypn plus 1 will the value of ypn plus 1 will be greater than the value that was calculated here okay now we will move our discussion to packed columns see here we discussed how to calculate the um, concentration in uh, tray column and also how to draw the operating line and how to find the number of trays required now we will discuss about packed columns which are large travels just like tray columns in where do we do not find any trays but we try we we uh, we have packings of with uh, made of different materials and the gas and liquid uh, will flow through the space available between this packing and in in this pro flow process the, there will be a contact between gas and liquid phases and as a result the solute present in the gas phase will be transferred to the liquid phase so here we cannot find the number of trays here because we, there is no tray but what we need to find is we need to identify the height of the packed column to achieve a particular composition change or to achieve a particular uh, transfer of solute from the gas phase to the liquid phase so to solve this let us consider a gas uh, uh, let us consider an adsorption column packed column like this and i have identified two location one and two 
the gas phase is entering from location 1 and it is leaving from location 2. Similarly, liquid phase is entering from location 2 and it is leaving from location 1. Here I have used G2, Y2, but G2 is the number of moles of gases entering per unit area per unit time. It should be noted that here the unit of G2 is kilo moles per meter square hour. Y2 is the mole fraction of the solute in gas phase leaving the stream. And here Y1 is the mole fraction of the gas phase entering the stream. Here G1 represents the flow rate of gas phase entering per unit area per unit time. Similarly, we have L2 and L1, flow rate of liquid phase entering and leaving at unit uh, entering and leaving per unit area per unit time. So here, since we do not have any tray, we will do a theoretical approach to find the height of the column. So here, the method is known as height equivalent of theoretical plate. What we will do is we will divide the session into a divide the entire tray into number of section, and we will I will calculate the height of one section, and also we will calculate the number of sections required. So the height of one section into the number of sections will give you the total height of the column.